Good morning, everybody. It's your favorite aspiring revolutionary here, wondering author, reminding you that we are all the authors of our own lives. As always, my message remains the same. Spend less, live more, earn your freedom with frugality. Today, uh, just sitting down, I will be departing and going to start training for a new job in Augusta, Georgia tomorrow. Exciting. <sighs> I've spent four hours, maybe five hours at the skate park yesterday. Exhilarating. Today we're going to pick up where we left off with uh, Pericles Athens. Last time we discussed how Pericles democratized the uh, Athenian city-state. And today we're going to talk a little bit about family life. So like what was it actually like to live in Pericles Athens? So he says, most written materials were created by members of the wealthy elite. So abstracting details about family life requires some reading between the lines. Xenophon wrote a book where a wealthy Athenian landowner, Isumachus, explains to his bride that God made her place indoors. Which is kind of a familiar theme. Um, he, it's definitely not the only culture that said women's role was inside the home. Herodotus also reported in his book histories that Egyptian women would, quote, go out to the market and engage in trade while men stay at home and do the weaving to show how different the cultures were. So Herodotus, it, would, it really, the Greeks in general would poke fun at the Persians and the Greek or the Egyptians for being kind of effeminate in some ways, which is funny because the Romans will do the same thing about the Greeks. In Greek mythology, the gods created the first woman, Pandora, to punish men for their sins and give her a desirable, bo desirable body and deceitful mind, which parallels um, biblical, uh, what do you call it, eschatology, symbolism, biblical symbolism, um, pretty, pretty, pretty well. <laughs> Anyways, so... Athenian women couldn't own property, go to court, or vote. And children were legally considered orphans if their father died. So women were very much second-rate citizens. Uh, so like we can ch congratulate them for their democracy, all that we want. But ultimately, like it was a very limited democracy. Hashtag harsh. Since only men could own property, things got weird if a father died with only a daughter. She had to find a male guardian and have a son with him, possibly causing a divorce so her child could inherit her dead father's estate. Man, the laws back then. Um, in terms of the state, a woman's primary civic duty in classical Greece was to produce the next generation of children. Which, I mean, a lot of women probably would... Um, even today would like say that like you know one of the things that brought them the most purpose in life was having children there's men that would say the same thing so <laughs> although women had restricted lives compared to their male counterparts Athenian ladies still got together to celebrate Persephone which is a uh, a god during a holiday called the Thesmophoria <laughs> Spartan women on the other hand had way more rights. They were able to own property, and due to a steep decline in the male Spartan population during the 3rd century, women become the richest people in the entire city-state, actually, because all the, the guys die. <laughs> Remember, Sparta kind of dies out because they have an issue um, maintaining their population. In his book Politics, though, Aristotle asks, quoting, what difference is there between women ruling and rulers being ruled by women? So back then, um, they felt like men were supposed to be the leaders. I definitely think that leadership is something that is just, it's a, it's a human capacity, uh, something that anybody could develop, but not everybody necessarily does. <laughs> Spartan women also went to school, learned to read, and participated in civic matters, much to the astonishment of other Greek women. However, despite Spartan women leading marginally better lives, their ability to own property exposed a critical flaw in the Spartan inheritance system. Over time, women accumulated more and more land, dispossessing men and ruining their chances at citizenship. Remember, Greeks based their citizenship 
laws on property ownership, which even the United States did until very recently. <laughs> In, or at least I guess maybe we weren't. It wasn't citizenship in the U.S. It may it may have just been voting. In 479, there were roughly 8,000 full Spartan citizens, and 100 years later, they had been reduced to merely 1,000. So like a 87 percent decline in population over a thousand years. There weren't a ton of actual full Spartan male citizens to begin with, but there's hardly any by the end of like the third century. <laughs> Only married men with sons were allowed to go to Thermopylae in 480. And in 465, Spartan men were exempt from military service if, if they fathered three sons. And and if a Spartan guy could father four sons, he didn't have to pay taxes, he was tax exempt. Um, now, family lives were based on the oikos, or household. And families often lived together in multi-generational homes marriages were arranged and there were no premarital dating and citizenship transferred along with the household. Citizenship was hard to obtain and once you did, um, you wanted to hold on to it. So, but but really like arranged marriages, multi-generational households, there's still some, many cultures that do that today and throughout history that's kind of the norm. So next time we'll pick up and talk about the Peloponnesian War. I'm also going to bring my whiteboard with me when I go to Augusta. So when I'm in the hotel at night, I should be able to, or I definitely can, I'll be able to um, do some work for, or I'll be able to do some videos each night on Aristotle. So we can go into that. I'm in my actual content pre-creation stage where I'm just doing the research part. I'm to the part where he's discussing human relationships and friendships. And, uh, interesting but we're just getting past the virtues as far as what i'm actually putting out on my youtube channel so far but anyways this is a wandering author here reminding you that we are all the authors of our own lives as always my message remains the same spend less live more earn your freedom with frugality what are you guys doing in order to inspire uplift and empower your local community today because this world isn't changing unless we all do our part you can count on me to do mine daily till next time i love y'all